money, status, then personality. That's what I'm gonna go with, man. Sar experience. Привет, is Odessa Mama. Welcome to Odessa, Ukraine. You just heard a list from a YouTuber who is who self-identifies as MGTOW or Red Pill on the internet. Now, today's video is not going to be going into depth exactly about what Red Pill philosophy is, or what MGTOW is, is men going their own way, and all that stuff. That will be way too deep for today's video. So I'm going to focus it in on the list and the ranking he gave where he was outlining what he believes are women's priorities when they're looking for a man, a man to date, and how I believe that this list is completely wrong when you come here to Eastern Europe, to a city like Odessa in Ukraine, it's actually going to be really counterproductive for you to think in those terms like he outlined. Now, he was actually talking about Los Angeles. If you're interested in this video, I'll link it down below and you can go and see the whole context of what he was talking about. Uh, I don't want to get in, you know, this video to be three hours long if I start getting into red pill philosophy and what it is exactly. Um, but basically, this list is really helpful. I'm actually going to go into it in another vodcast, but um, yeah, let me know what you think of this one in the comments below afterwards. And this format where I answer to uh, I, I react to another YouTuber's comment to do with dating. Uh, the reason I've decided to take this one is because I see in the comments or I receive you know, emails, uh, messages from a lot of viewers who have this similar mindset coming from Red Pill. Uh, and just in a short brief, Red Pill is about taking the Red Pill, not being Blue Pill, which is that you see reality for it is. It tends to have a rather negative um, perspective on women's uh, reasoning for choosing men or how they prioritize dating men or their their interaction with men overall that's another huge debate I agree with some things I say I don't agree with other things overall and of course there are degrees of being red pill uh, but that's a discussion for another day so today's video I really want to focus it down to something practical for you because this list ranked as you saw based that women prioritize number one looks number two money number three status and number four personality and I want to run you right into why I believe that is a really bad way to look at things if you're gonna come here to Eastern Europe and hope to date and aim to date beautiful women like there are lots here. So let's dive into the first one, which is looks. Now I actually did a video on this and uh, it's actually taken down off YouTube at the moment, but I'm uh, pursuing some legal avenues to get it back up to you. But in summary, listen, Ukrainian women, Russian women, Belarusian women, they do not prioritize a man's looks in terms of looking pretty or looking necessarily fit or having high cheekbones, whatever things you read on the internet about what men should look like, it's not their biggest priority whatsoever. And in fact, in this region, in Russian, there is a great expression that sums it up and that is Mushina dozhen pit chem lucha chen abizani. That means a man must be just a little bit better than an ape. So there you go. So as long as you are a little bit better looking than an ape, you're good to go in this region. Now, that does not mean you can be a slob when you come here. There's a difference between looks and being presentable or fitting in where you go in terms of how you dress. It's not being a slob and dressing really badly, uh, like and not dressing appropriately for the context where you're in. Like you go to a very nice restaurant and you dress, I know, in flip-flops and shorts and uh, just a t-shirt wet from coming from the seaside of course that doesn't fit in and you're not gonna that is where looks might count but you know working out uh having uh high cheekbones or having a face that you know on tinder for example is going to get you a lot of swipes isn't going to help you that much here because it's not the number one priority for women and even as i just told you they even have an expression in russian to to communicate that to you and this is really something that I've noticed uh, with guys who come here to Eastern Europe. Uh, I've often heard them say when they see a Russian Ukrainian guy walking with a beautiful woman, that guy is punching way above his weight. In, in terms of they look at him, they say, oh, he's not handsome, he's not um, ribbed, you know, he doesn't have a six pack and he's got this beautiful girl on his arm. You know, there's something wrong, there's something not normal. Now, that is because as I explained to my friends who, or our clients who say that, actually none of my clients have ever said that because they watch my videos, but I did have some friends who came here and they actually looked at guys and said that. And I just outlined them, listen, 
that's not the number one priority for girls here. Now, don't get me wrong. If you have a six pack, if you work out, uh, if you're very handsome, and I've had friends in particular who've come here who are very handsome indeed, uh, just genetically, they won that lottery, they have an advantage, but it's not a massive advantage. What I want to, I'll put it to you like this. It's basically like a booster, right? It's a booster in the beginning. What does that mean in effect? I would say that like basically anywhere, if you're good looking, you get extra amount of time to impress a girl at the beginning of an interaction. That boost that it gives you is the fact that you buys you probably 30 seconds, two minutes at the beginning of the interaction when you meet a woman. Uh, being handsome definitely is an advantage. You're, you know, you're more striking. You have the better first impression. We have, uh, just trying to think of the name in English, we have a bias towards seeing good traits in beautiful people in general. Uh, what is the name for that in English? It's like, I guess, beauty bias. There's probably a more scientific word for it. But basically, yeah, when we meet people and they're good looking, we try to um, see them in the best possible light. Basically, We want them to be good people and have the values that we want. Now, because of that, you're going to get extra time at the beginning for sure. But if you're boring as hell and don't have personality, looks are not going to get you very far especially here where it's definitely not a priority for women in terms of a partner for dating for fun you know i've been with one or two friends here who are really good looking who modeled as guys and yes it is a bit easier for them but both of them have great personalities are cool have uh, as i'm going to go, go go into it for you have different things about them they're going to make them attracted to women here anyways so they were able to utilize that advantage they had in the beginning to be successful in dating women here in Eastern Europe. But if you don't have personality, as I'm going to be going into, which remember, uh, Grant Adams in that opening clip he said was the least important, man, I've seen it. They're just going to crash and burn nearly all the time here. So definitely, um, and of course, being, being physically attractive in terms of working out, um, it's good in the sense that as long as you're not obese, as long as you're not a slob, uh, as long as you are not Maybe, I mean, we also hear about height, actually, that's one of the things that, uh, especially in Western Europe or North America, that women have these height requirements, which would basically be my height, and that's like about 5 foot 10, 5 foot 11, or 178 to 180 centimeters, which is basically where I am. Um, also, that is not such a big concern here. Of course, it's evolutionary biology. Being bigger, being taller is definitely attractive to women something subconsciously that they can think about in terms of you know passing on DNA and their, their children also being their offspring also being taller but that said for example I'm as I said about 178 179 and I've dated beautiful women here who are models who were 182 183 and that was not a problem at all and you can imagine with the heels they were even taller for me I have no complex about that at all I love girls who are tall uh, so there you go that's just a personal example where it matters a small bit but not massive now of course if you come here and you happen to be uh, unfortunately for a guy 160 for example really really short and you lie about it as I saw one guy did before here and then he was uh, he wasn't 160 but he was shorter than he pretended to be uh, before he met the girl and the girl met him and said well you're shorter I'm not interested well he also lied about it then it can be uh, a small factor I would say but you know it's so often you see short guys here one with super tall models so really it's minor. I would say that actually looks make about a 10% different and most of that advantage is just in the beginning when you meet the woman being able to make that first impression and being more striking for sure. But number one priority for women in Eastern Europe? Hell no, it's definitely not applicable from that list as being the number one priority. So let's move on to the second one which is money number two. Now is money then the second priority or a bigger priority than looks? for women in Eastern Europe from here, Ukraine, or in Russia, or in Belarus. Now, I would say it does matter more than looks. So it's definitely going to be more important. Uh, of course, if you watch the other videos on my channel, I have lots of content. I'll link some of it up in cards and down below in the description where we talk about scammers. And here, you've probably seen lots of videos here on YouTube. I read a lot about how materialistic Eastern European women are, are renowned. You probably heard that they are gold diggers, that they're only interested in men for money. So then you must be thinking, Connor, surely money is like number one priority. Again, that's not really true. Of course, like all women, being, you know, if you put it back to an evolution of biology sense, being able to provide is important, and money can definitely uh, get you places with women. Now, the big problem, of course, in Ukraine, 
uh, it's not getting dates and getting women out, it's not getting scammed by them. So the problem is if you lead with money, which I've seen a lot of videos on in this red pill community, I watched a lot of the, the leading, which say most popular guys, they all seem to think you just have to have money and the women will come. The problem is the women who come in general, if you lead with money, are the gold diggers because that's what they want. It's not going to be the good girl. So this is a really counterproductive strategy to focus on. Now, do I think that all Eastern European women are gold diggers? Of course not. Most of them are actually not. I think the problem is that a lot of Westerners come here and they flaunt their cash and then they attract, of course, those kind of girls who want to abuse them and use them for their money. And also there's less social stigma for women here in terms of just saying, I want a guy with money and actually prioritizing that and being open about it. Unlike in the West, where because of say radical feminism or just feminism in general over the last 70 years, it's a little bit, it's more frowned upon for women to say, yeah, I just want a rich guy. It just doesn't gel with the societal norms today to say that a free choice of course uh, if that's what you want to seek in life just someone to provide resources for you but overall I wouldn't say that's actually the case for most Eastern European women now definitely money is important in life in general right so if you have no money and you're destitute money is vital as you get richer it's a little bit the margin utility money starts to drop now uh, money is also and I'm going to get into the third point about status indicator of being established being successful i.e. having status in society so you have to be clear to distinguish those two whether the actual money is what um, you know is going to give you the advantage with the girls now it's again a boost it's not necessarily a boost in the beginning when you meet a girl uh, I think the real advantage is the freedom it can buy for you and that's why I love money if I were to put it to you that way uh, it's allows you to just do things because you have the financial independence to do that so for example you can be really spontaneous and say hey let's go do this let's take a trip down to another town uh, and then we go out and I don't know we we take a boat and go out here on the Black Sea for example and if you don't have the money to do that then obviously you can't be that spontaneous and that kind of stuff and using money to do that that's what's really powerful and actually really attractive you can create a unique experience and you can use money in order to do that or money buys you out of problems like something I don't know you know, you can't, I don't know, you can't get a taxi or something to get home not using the app, you have to wait and you can just put the premium, for example. So things like that, definitely money is important. I don't want to say that you shouldn't focus on developing yourself and your finances, that's definitely true. I just think that having watched a lot of those uh, red pillars that they seem to just focus on that part uh, exclusively and then it creates a problem, especially in Eastern Europe, because you are going to focus just on um, projecting that wealth and status doesn't attract the best girls overall. Uh, I wouldn't lead with that. I've actually seen that with one of my clients who actually came here. Uh, he actually went with me to Minsk where he really led with money. This is right in the beginning when I started having clients. And unfortunately, who do you think he was attracting all night? And when we went out together, it was the girls who were just interesting, been sponsored. And he actually had as well, uh, basically a girl he was sponsoring. Um, which is a free choice. I mean, that's one way to attract women is just to sponsor a lifestyle. Wouldn't be my advice to do that if you want a serious long-term relationship with someone because obviously the emotional spike you can get from providing something materialistic is very short-lived and you don't have that emotional connection with someone. So uh, it becomes definitely more advantageous to have money if you want that long-term relationship because you can provide stability over the long run. And of course, you're gonna have a family with someone that is very important because it's a lot more important than having just a fling and just paying and throwing, making it rain in the club. Definitely, I would say that overall, it is more important than looks here in Eastern Europe. But again, I think it's a booster. I really think that it's probably about 10% of what goes into attracting women. It has definitely more than 10%, I would say, if you want a long-term relationship, being able to provide in some way. And that doesn't mean that you are the sole provider necessarily either here. Of course, you can meet women who want to uh, also contribute and, maybe, and have good paying jobs as well. So you're not under pressure to always provide. Just remember that, of course, as I say in all my videos, if you invite a girl out, you are paying the bill here. There's no going Dutch in Eastern Europe. Just forget that. I saw that with a guy from uh, Belgium who I met when I was traveling. And I was like, man, Eastern, Europe women, Eastern European women are definitely not for you. So in summary, more important than looks, but not the whole deal. So number three, he puts status, he puts it lower. Now actually, because I watched the whole video and I, you know, I didn't want to play it out all the beginning, 
of uh, this uh, of this podcast. Of course, the link is below if you want to go and watch it. He says that for younger women, then actually status is number two and money is number three because, well, basically their um, ambitions or the expectations are lower. Like he gave the example, one thousand dollars is a lot to a girl who's 18, but it's nothing to a girl who's 28 in the States. And definitely I would emphasize that status, and that is connected to money, is a lot more important than actually the money itself. And that's something for you to really focus on because being able to reject status is what makes, is going to make you really attractive here in Eastern Europe. In his example, he was talking about like the entertainment industry in LA and he said, well, there are lots of guys who are film actors and film stars. So by the time a girl is 25 or, or 30, she's just not interested in that. I would say if you're a film actor and you come here to uh, Eastern Europe, to Odessa, you're going to have a ball because that status, societal status is really important. Now, why is that? It's a little bit to do with the history of the former Soviet Union here. Uh, basically, you had communism. There wasn't so much uh, status and definitely financial differences between people and then everything collapsed. A small group of men basically grabbed all the money and then as a result had all the status. Now you're probably saying, Connor, but that's money. But it's not about being able to necessarily buy things. Now, of course, you can do that provider game. Uh, it means sponsoring girls. And that's one way to get them definitely, as I said, with the money in part in, you know, reason number two or number two on the list. But actually projecting status and that's where we're going to link into the fourth one, which is personality is really important here. Now, as a Westerner, as I've said, I have a podcast about whether being Western is really cool in Ukraine. Uh, I can link it up below and down and down below as well in the description for you, you want to go and watch all that. But, but basically in Ukraine, it doesn't help a huge amount unless you're the right type of Westerner. Uh, I think it has more of an effect in Russia and Belarus. So being able to, you can definitely win brownie points and you know have higher status automatically by being a foreigner here. As long as you're a cool foreigner, uh, you're not, a, you know, you don't get identified as being a sex tourist, for example, which is a huge problem here in Odessa during the summer because there's just like thousands, tens of thousands of horny guys who flock here hitting on the local girls. And also in Kiev, for example, and probably a little bit in Russia, like St. Petersburg and Moscow, but less there. But if you are able to, you know, for example, say you were a hipster and you dress in hipster style and then you go to the hipster places. And guess what? As a foreigner, you're going to be even extra cool because you're going to be a little bit more unique. Same if you speak Russian, for example, because then you take yourself out normally of the sex tourist bracket. You have a reason to be here. Then, yes, you get a boost and you get a boost in status. Now, depending on what you're doing back home, and I see a lot of guys who actually have professions um, that would give them a lot of stats here, but they don't necessarily uh, project that because of their interactions. And that's because they don't lead, they're not assertive. Uh, so status, really important in Eastern Europe. Of course, money is attached to that. Of course, money can buy you the freedom to express that status better, but actually being able to utilize that is really the key. Like there are a lot of guys who come here with lots of money, they throw it around, but they don't project any status and they don't project their personality uh, to, to emphasize that. And as a result, they just spend a lot of money and maybe they get a gold digger for a week where they end up with a prostitute, unfortunately, and they just pay for per transaction. Again, if that's what you're into, hey, it's a free world as long as it's consensual. So uh, that's not what I emphasize in the, on this channel. And that's what I, not what I encourage you to do when you come here to Eastern Europe. So I would say number three status, really, really important. Now, how much of a boost does it give you? Status, more if for a short-term relation, we're actually attracting women, definitely more than looks, way more than looks, and definitely more than actual money, although there is obviously uh, a connection between the two, but being able to express that, like let me give you a, uh, a good example, because me and uh, one of my close friends who travel here are lawyers by profession. Whenever we meet law, law students, obviously we are lawyers who have achieved a lot in our careers, we have high status. It's nothing actually to do with the money. Of course, law students or girls who are women who are working in law firms who are lawyers, they are going to see that as super high status. And of course, they're a lot more attracted to it as a result. Again, of course, you can say lawyers make a pretty high salary depending where they are in the world. They can be like upper middle class, we'll say, not necessarily billionaires from being a lawyer, but they can definitely be millionaires. So there is a connection, a little bit of a tie with money, but it's actually just been higher up and in, in, um, in kind of like a tribe 
right? Because obviously we have the same interests and you're in a higher position, again, status, and then being a foreign one, again, status. So I would say that while I said looks give you a 10% boot, especially the beginning, money in the short run gives you about another 10% boost, I would say status gives you like 20% boost, uh, 20 to 30% boost especially, and there is that little bit of a connection with money. So that brings us to our fourth point on the list, which is the lowest priority, and that is personality. Now, I want to make one thing clear. I'm not talking about your personality in terms of being a nice guy. In Eastern Europe, in particular, being a nice guy is going to be a disaster. Never mind in the West. In Eastern Europe, it's going to be a disaster, full stop. It's just going to, uh, don't even go there. If you're a nice guy, you're going to look meek. You're going to look needy. You're not going to project yourself as being assertive, like I referred to earlier. You're not going to be able to lead. And basically, you're going to look extremely low status and going to be extremely unattractive. So definitely from that point of view, it is actually the opposite. It's the most important trait to get right. Because basically with your personality, being leading, being able to lead, being assertive, being strong, in terms of direction that you're bringing things, having a plan about where you're going to go on a date or your interactions with girls when you meet them. Uh, I haven't been able to like project that you're confident. Confident is so damn attractive to women uh, because it's, it's basically connected to status, like the earlier point. It is the most important thing to get right. It's 50%. It's 50% of the game. Uh, and those other things that are boosters like the looks, the, the money and you know the status which is obviously we have this little causal connection between the three in terms of money to status to your personality but being able to project that it's really what you've got to focus on because this is where you're going to get the biggest uh, bang for your buck if that's an unfortunate pun in this uh, context with Eastern Europe but yeah making more money it should improve your confidence but I see so many guys that come here they just, maybe it's because their expectations are wrong. They just think, hey, it's going to be easy. I'm the high roller. Let me make it rain in the club. And then nothing happens or nothing good happens. They get scammed out of a thousand euros. The girls who they thought were super falling all over them are actually just interested in robbing their money, stealing them. They're just thieves, the scammers. So definitely you need to not lead with money. That's my uh, advice. Don't be so concerned about looks. Uh, just be presentable, like if you're going to a nice club and the dress code is going to be having a dress shirt and nice trousers and good shoes, put those on. Don't show up in like, I don't know, uh, an NBA top and, uh, or a football jersey or something and then uh, really loud trainers and shorts. Like, and especially be, you know, if you don't know anyone in the city and you have no social clout, you're not going to get in. <laughs> the run, you're not going to be cool in the club or have status or be able to project yourself properly. You're just not going to get even in. Face control is going to lock you down and keep you outside. So that kind of stuff in terms of looks, it's more about being presentable. Uh, of course, don't be obese. Do sport. It's going to give you more energy anyways. It's going to be allow you to project confidence in yourself. Uh, so there is a little bit of a causal connection between all these points at the end of the day. Being presentable, Obviously, if you make more money, you know, you, you're able to afford to come here, first of all, and fly from what happens to be North America, Latin America, Australia, uh, Western Europe, and actually, you know, live somewhere that's not a youth hostel, <laughs> obviously, uh, and you're able to live, stay at a decent place and actually go to the, the good places and be able to afford that. That's enough, uh, really, at the end of the day, for basic attraction and having that extra, like, money in terms of able to be spontaneous and create a an unique experience. Um, and project that status of yours, all of that leads basically down to personality and how you are able to interact and behave with women. Definitely don't make the huge mistake of looking like it's the first time you've ever met beautiful women in your life. That's gonna look again like low status and that's something that you can easily deal with. So this just behind me, just for a few seconds before we close out this video is the monument to the unknown sailor. Something really important to understand here about Odessa is that it is a maritime city and that is an important monument. Uh, and there's actually an internal flame there. Go check that out when you come here. So in summary, uh, Graham's put them in his video talking about LA in all fairness, uh, that it's like, the one is looks, number two is money, number three is status, although that reverses as if the girl is really young. And number four is your personality. I would say you need to flip that script completely, say number one is your personality, that's the thing you can do, work the most on the easiest. Then after that, number two is your status. Again, there's a connection between the two, projecting the status that you have. Number three is money. It's gonna give you a boost 
allow you to actually project your status and your personality a lot more. And the least important, as long as you don't look like an ape, is looks. So definitely be careful what you read. Uh, always question it when it happens to be information on my channel. You always do your best to verify things and really have develop a, a deeper understanding of a country's mentality and what the real priorities are and not be sucked into believing that, you know, unless you look like a top model um, or multimillionaire or billionaire and, um, I don't know, have some, I don't know, post or position in society that gives you massive status, although that's a little bit more important, of course, than in the others that you can't meet beautiful women here. The most of it is actually in your hands and you can work on yourself and you can succeed in Eastern Europe in terms of dating beautiful women, whether it happens to be here in Ukraine, Russia or Belarus. Now, before I go from today's video, over the last few weeks, I've actually had this PDF, which will give you an insight, give you the secret places where I meet beautiful women in Eastern Europe, in cities like Minsk, Kiev, and here in Odessa, Ukraine. And I've had that under a few videos, and it's been extremely popular. It actually blew me away the, the number of people who asked for it. So I've decided to extend it for another week. So if you go down below, if you haven't already looked at that uh, PDF, then it's going to be there. So just it's really something that people have to pay normally about $250 to get so it's free at the moment but it's only going to be until the end of the month and I am working on a new video course it's going to be very soon probably even maybe tomorrow there's going to be an announcement about that and it's going to be how you can avoid the scammers it's going to be scam buster boot camp I'm really excited about it We're working on it over the last few weeks during this quarantine when obviously I've not had clients come in person super pumped about it it's going to be exciting to get started and you're going to find out about it tomorrow so just make sure that you have whacked the notification bell below once you've subscribed assuming that you're a subscriber or just tune back in tomorrow or make sure that you've actually already gone down and gotten that pdf and stuff because i will send an email to those who are already on that list that's the end of today's video definitely of course drop a comment about what you think about red pill philosophy migtails mango in their own way and i will see you very soon in another video Dopobachna, Disvidanya from Adesa Mama. Sar Experience.